The Community Cancer Program at Washington Hospital offers people with cancer and their families the most effective diagnostic services, treatment, information, and support possible as they make the journey through cancer treatment. The program also provides education and support for cancer prevention, along with up-to-date screening and detection services. Hi, Ms. Stanton. How are you today? I'm okay. High quality care and excellent patient outcomes are the top priority. The program monitors, measures, and continuously strives to improve services. Guided by the patient first ethic, the doctors, nurses, and professional staff of the cancer program focus on providing comfort, ensuring privacy, and treating each individual with dignity. Welcome to Voices in Health. I'm Dr. Barbara Kostick. Joining us in the studio is Dr. Vandana Sharma, Medical Director of Washington Hospital's Cancer Genetics Program, and Marianne Hetzel, Tumor Registry Coordinator for the Community Cancer Program. Welcome to Voices in Health. Dr. Sharma, can you tell us about the Community Cancer Program? Sure. The Community Cancer Program is a service and an organization of Washington Hospital. It includes the concerted efforts of physicians involved in cancer care, as well as ancillary support staff and administrative individuals. Mm. I understand congratulations are in order. In addition to earning three-year accreditation from the Commission on Cancer of the American College of Surgeons, the program has also received an Outstanding Achievement Award for providing such a high level of care. Well, Dr. Sharma, why is this award such an accomplishment? I think this award is such an accomplishment because it recognizes the hard work of multiple different individuals in the Washington healthcare system. It recognizes the integrated care that we provide, the quality of the support staff and the technical services available at the hospital, as well as recognizes that the physicians in the hospital are really focused on providing the best quality local care. Well, Marianne, what is the accreditation process? The hospital goes through an accreditation process for the American College of Surgeons. There are 36 standards that a hospital must achieve in order to be an accredited facility. We go through this every three years. Um, and in order to receive the Outstanding Achievement Award, we have to exceed the standards for accreditation in at least six standards, and so we were able to do that. Can you tell me a little bit about what were those 36 criteria? It involves our cancer committee and the membership and the meeting uh, frequency and attendance, our tumor board meetings, and the requirements that have to be met for that. It's our nursing department, radiation oncology, it's the data that's captured in the tumor registry, um, community outreach programs, physician education, and quality improvement. So it's the whole basket of things, isn't yes. it? Yes. Dr. Sharma, how many hospitals in, in this area have the outstanding award? So we're actually the only hospital in Alameda County to achieve this level of distinction. Can you summarize the array of services and specialties that the program provides? So the program provides services for all types of cancers, for all individuals with cancer. And this includes the very early stages of cancer screening and prevention, uh, cancer diagnosis, and then cancer treatment, including surgical treatment, radiation treatment, and medical oncology treatment. And then subsequently, we have additional services to support patients uh, throughout their journey. So there's an excellent health library, which has an amazing am amount of resources and educational material, mm -hmm. uh, lymphedema clinic, physical therapy, nutrition, and then we actually have a very special uh, program, which is the retail service of bras for body and soul, which can help women who have had a mastectomy get special garments. Dr. Sharma, what about coordination of care? 
So coordinated care is very important for a patient with cancer. The treatment of cancer involves multidisciplinary care. It usually involves uh, treatment by a surgeon, a radiation oncologist, a medical oncologist, and we achieve that through our uh, monthly tumor boards. Oh, so patients are presented at, at, in front of other doctors? Yes, so once a patient is diagnosed with cancer, before they're treated, their case is uh, discussed at a tumor board, which is a meeting with many different doctors mm -hmm. who are present. It's usually the treating physician as well as their colleagues. The case is discussed, we review the pathology, we review the radiology, and then we usually come up with a treatment plan that everybody agrees on. So you're, you're really getting a second opinion without having to be dragged to some other doctor's office for a second opinion. Exactly. It is, it is exactly that. There's, there's usually other surgeons who are present, all the medical oncologists in the community are present, and there are different radiologists and pathologists. And in fact, we've had situations in tumor board where treatment plans have been modified based on the suggestion of one of the other doctors present. Hmm. Marianne, you're the coordinator of the tumor registry. How does that fit in? Well, it, it's the process of capturing the data for all of our cancer patients and some benign reportable diseases such as brain tumors. And so it's all collected into a database. Why is it so important to do that? Well, a couple reasons. One, it's, it's reportable by state and federal laws. So we have to do that and we have to report the disease and it's all done in strict confidential manner. And the second part of it is for us at Washington Hospital to be able to analyze the data in concordance with national and state data to verify that our patients are getting high quality of care. And, and so you also could measure how well the patients here do against best benchmarks nationally? That's exactly too? what it is that we do. Wow, that's really cool. And between you and me and our audience, how are we doing? Well, we are rated very high. In fact, we exceed the national and state averages. Oh, that's amazing. So we're one of the best. And, and when, when the surveyor was here visiting us, he said he's never seen a facility with such high ratings. In fact, I think he called us a model program. So you can draw data from the registry about how effective screening and prevention are too then, can't you? Oh, absolutely. Well, that's one of the, the things that we do annually is look at our data each year and then we can trend. Well, Dr. Sharma, does that make a difference? It, it definitely makes a difference. I think when we look at our data, one of the things that we're seeing that, for example, if you take breast cancer, we're finding that women are being diagnosed with breast cancer at earlier and earlier stages. And that makes a difference because a woman with stage one breast cancer, which is the earliest breast cancer, has a higher chance of cure than someone who presents with stage three or four breast cancer. Right, and so by looking at our trends each year and, and, and trying to identify later stage disease, then we're able to let our community programs know to get out and do more screenings and more patient education on early detection. So we've talked about how we do prevention and we've looked at national guidelines. What is the perspective then on, on the guidelines that are coming out? Should we follow them, what they say? I think the guidelines are basically saying that we should be talking to our patients, that we should be explaining to them what are the risks of screening, what are the benefits of screening, what's the likelihood that they're going to get a positive result or a false positive result. And I think that what we have to offer here at Washington Hospital is a very robust team of physicians and nurses who can help patients understand that information. So for example, for some women, annual screening is very important because they have a strong family history or perhaps they have a genetic history. So for them, the guidelines which say that they should be getting a mammogram every two year isn't appropriate. But they're not in that guideline because they have this strong history. Exactly. And so maybe the patient education part is to tell people that not everyone fits in the guideline of the the person that can wait on these screening yes. tests. Yes, yes. These new guidelines are really designed for individuals of average risk. And for breast cancer, for example, that really means no significant family history or no personal history of a genetic cancer syndrome. There isn't really just one way to treat something in a lot of cases. You know, the data is still out about what's the best way to do it. So I guess you have to stay up so you can see where that data is changing next week when you make that decision. Exactly, and the treatment of cancer, like you mentioned, is rapidly evolving. Mm -hmm. So for example, not all kidney cancers need to have the entire kidney taken out. 
So mm -hmm. if somebody presents with a very early stage, very small cancer, they can have a partial nephrectomy, so have only part of the kidney removed. Mm -hmm. That can be done laparoscopically, so through very small incisions. And sometimes, if somebody has a very small tumor, we may even suggest a, a minimally invasive approach, such as radiofrequency ablation or cryosurgery. So very novel ideas to treat cancer with minimal side effects. Let's talk about the prevention program that, that the, this community program has. You said about genetic screening. How would you access our program? When would you want to access the community program? The Cancer Genetics Program is a referral-based program, so we would recommend that if an individual is concerned about their cancer risk based on their heredity, that they talk to their primary care physician and uh, have them make a referral into the genetics program. And the program is really for individuals who have had cancer diagnosed at a very young age. So for example, women diagnosed with breast cancer younger than the age of 30 or, or 40. For individuals who have a very strong family history. And what that means is that multiple individuals, multiple generations are involved. And it also may be reasonable for somebody who has a family history with lots of different cancers in the family. Well, thank you both for sharing your thoughts on the Community Cancer Program at Washington Hospital. Coming up next on Voices in Health, we'll talk more about the treatment process and the compassionate care provided by the staff of the Community Cancer Program. Dude, you'll be fine. <laughs> oh, no. There are plenty of accidents out there just waiting to happen. Fortunately, when they do, you have some of the finest emergency care available right here in the community. You be careful now. Every woman is unique. At the Washington Women's Center, we take a unique approach to your health. We offer a comfortable, supportive environment, state-of-the-art technology, health screenings and resources, and we're the first center in the Bay Area to be named a nationally accredited breast center. We're more than a health provider. We're your health partner. Call to schedule an appointment. What do I call it a funny bone? Why can't penguins fly? I can see something. Can we go to the moon on vacation? If you think it's tough answering these questions, imagine the ones you'll get if your child is diagnosed with cancer. CureSearch.org can help. It's run by doctors and scientists whose research has led to an overall cure rate of 78%. You're not as alone as you feel. Washington Hospital's Community Cancer Program has a highly skilled, compassionate medical staff who specializes in all types of cancer and provides the latest diagnostic procedures and treatment available. Once a cancer has been diagnosed, the next stage of the journey begins. A specific and unique treatment plan is outlined for each individual patient. It can involve surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, or a combination of all of these treatments. Joining us now is Dr. Michael Bastache, Radiation Oncologist for the Washington Radiation Oncology Center, and Alice Santos, Nursing Director in the Patient Care Services Division of Washington Hospital. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Bastache, can you tell us about how the Radiation Oncology Center fits in with the Community Cancer Program? Well, it's an important component because uh, about two-thirds of all cancer patients at some point in their disease process uh, require the services of a radiation oncologist. And that, that includes both for definitive care, which means when we treat patients for cure, or uh, for palliative care when we treat patients to alleviate symptoms of their disease. How do you get involved with the patient with cancer? Well, typically, you know, everything revolves around the primary care provider who typically is the one that sees the patient the most frequently and, you know, guides screening and 
you know, the patient would go to the primary care doctor for a particular complaint. Mm -hmm. And then from that physician, if an abnormality is detected, the patient is then further referred and maybe referred to me directly or to another colleague. And then it's just a matter of interdisciplinary discussion as to what the optimal treatment pathway is. Well, interdisciplinary discussion between, mm -hmm. I assume, surgeons and oncologists and and radiation oncologists, is that done at the tumor board then? Yeah, typically that's the, the initial salvo. So once the patient has met, uh, for example, with the primary care doctor, with, with mm -hmm. her family practitioner, with an abnormality in her mammogram, then that family practitioner sends the patient for a biopsy. And then further, you know, evaluations with medical oncologists, the surgeon, and the radiation oncologist. And then the, those three disciplines typically converge with the input from the pathologist and the radiologist to determine exactly what is going on and what the best treatment is. Well, we know, Alice, that nursing is a very important role in the, treating the cancer patient. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, sometimes it can be very challenging when you get a diagnosis of cancer and you get a lot of information and a lot of decisions to make. And so it can be a little bit overwhelming in the beginning. Well, like my patients, I know once I've said the word cancer, it seems like they stop listening. Yeah. You know, you can just see that, that, that they're not taking anything in. Yeah, it takes a while for that to kind of sink in for them. And they have lots of information, and they have to make lots of decisions. And so as nurses, we like to support them in that um, decision making. Do oncology nurses have any special training? Yes, we do. On Washington Hospital, on the fourth floor is our oncology floor. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of nurses that are oncology certified by the uh, Oncology Nursing Society. We've taken special classes and sat for an exam, and we have um, expertise in cancer care and the coordination of the different modalities for cancer care patients. Yeah, Dr. Bastash says there's a lot of different doctors and modalities involved, so is it the nurse that helps coordinate this care for the patient? Along with the physician, but um, there's lots of x-rays and procedures and medications, and so understanding all that and coordinating all that is very important for the cancer patient. I kind of see the nurse as, as also being someone that can help the patient broach difficult decisions or difficult questions that they might not feel comfortable talking to their doctor about. That's true, and they often talk to a nurse, and then we take that information and we share it with the physician so that he's aware of all their concerns or um, difficulties, side effects of medications, those kind of information. Well, you know, the, Dr. Bistosh, there's a lot of things, whether cancer involves surgery or radiation mm -hmm. or chemotherapy or all of the above, it seems like it is a very complicated process. How do you help with it? Well, you know, it's one of those situations where you have to sit with your colleagues and kind of say, well, you know, basically if I were in this patient's position, what would be some, you know, treatment options? And uh, you basically have to ascertain the stage of the disease, the patient-specific characteristics, and then particular tumor characteristics that will factor into what is the least morbid uh, route to cure chemo, for the patient mm -hmm. because often you have w really a selection of different side effects depending on you know the preferences of the patient and individual uh, desires. Well how has radiation therapy changed over the last couple of years? Well there have been some significant improvements in the delivery of radiation. Radiation itself was the predated chemotherapy as one of the first curative modalities aside from surgery mm -hmm. but what has always been more diffi most difficult about radiation therapy is locating the tumor and then being able to treat the tumor while sparing the surrounding normal structures. Mm. It's really important to spare the normal surrounding structures if that tumor is in your brain. At the Taylor McAdam Bell Neuroscience Institute here at Washington, they use a gamma knife. This takes beams of targeted radiation to destroy the brain tumor cells. And the accuracy is down to the millimeter. So as radiology has gotten more refined in detecting where the tumor is, mm -hmm. we've been able to integrate that into our practice and then direct the radiation more specifically to that tumor area. Alice, can you tell me a little bit more about the nursing role in, in say, maybe in chemotherapy? What happens there? Well, chemotherapy has, uh, can have some side effects. And so we have nurses that are trained to deliver and, uh, chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. And chemotherapy is in lots of different venues now. Device. It's by mouth or it can be intravenous. And so the nurses that we work, work at Washington Hospital are, are very adept at the side effects. We also have an oncology nursing um, clinical nurse specialist that helps us with that as well. And I'll, I'll bet you play a part and role in, in maybe helping 
tell the physician what's going on with the patient too. Absolutely. The nurses make rounds with those physicians and um, are able to explain any of the questions or they're a patient advocate and the patients and the families also have lots of questions and we try to help the patient talk to the physician about those. Is there something special about being an oncology nurse? Well, I think caring and compassion is everything. And we're with the patients at night when the lights are off and nobody's around and their fears and their concerns surface to the top and we're there with them, holding their hand and supporting them. Dr. Bustash, mm -hmm. is that a, a problem that you see with patients too, is the fear when they get cancer? Yeah, I, I, to echo what you and Ms. Santos spoke about earlier, when I sit down with a patient, the studies have shown that the patient typically forgets about 80% of the discussion. So I always recommend that the patient bring someone with him or her to the consult. And I think the best investment a patient can make early on is a pen and pad of paper. And then when they think of the question, just write it down and then bring those questions in with you and then write down the answers. Because you have a lot of information coming at you from just different physicians. It's realistic to see four or five different physicians within a two-week period. And, and that's on top of having the diagnosis of cancer and not necessarily having processed what that means to you. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you get your friends, family, and everyone else scouring the Internet and sending you a lot of information in addition to asking you questions about various therapies that you may not feel comfortable discussing. Is there any particular thing you think would help by having a local program rather than traveling to some distant site to get chemotherapy or radiation? Well, I think there is an institutional experience. If you've come and you've met Ms. Santos on the floor and you know her and all the floor nurses know you, and then you come back for some sort of complication, then it, the, the continuation of your care is, is much more, you know, coordinated, and that's actually better care. If you receive your chemotherapy or radiation at some other facility, develop an interval complication, and have to be brought to the hospital by ambulance, they by default take you to the closest hospital. And if that hospital knows you, mm -hmm. then your care is going to be better, it'll not be interrupted. So you would have more coordination Absolutely. and share the, the team All approach. the records are there, and, yeah. and they just they may actually know you. Yeah, we do establish a lot of relationships with patients mm -hmm. and families, and we see them often. And so we know how they're progressing. And so it is kind of comforting to see the same nurses, to come to the same floor, and to know what, what's going to happen. And we spend a lot of time on patient education and family support, because you need both. Thank you both for joining us. Coming up next, we'll hear more about the Community Cancer Program from the point of view that matters most, the experience of our patients. Stay tuned for more of Voices in Health. This is my linear accelerator. This is my cardiologist. This is my CT scanner. This is my surgical tray. This is our registered nurse. This is my digital mammography center. Washington Hospital is not owned by a corporation. It is owned by and open to everyone in our community, including you. This is my hospital. This is my hospital. This is my hospital. We have a better way to treat brain tumors without surgery or anesthesia. There are no knives, no cutting. No nausea or hair loss. And no hospital stay is required. Presenting outpatient gamma knife treatment at the Taylor McAdam Bell Neuroscience Institute in Fremont. Go to GammaKnifeProgram.com to learn more. You were not created in two dimensions. You are a complex construction of muscle and bone, blood vessels and synapses. Seeing your inner workings takes some equally sophisticated technology. That's why at Washington Hospital Outpatient Imaging Center, we've invested in the most advanced digital imaging equipment so we can diagnose you quickly and accurately. We see the whole you to treat the whole you. Go to whhs.com to learn more. Welcome back to Voices in Health. Our program on Washington Hospital's Community Cancer Center 
we've taken a look at many of the services provided to patients and the treatment process they go through. We also want to look at the cancer program from the perspective of our patients. So we've invited a veteran of the program to share her experiences. Cheryl Haynes is the mother of two boys from Pleasanton, California. In January of 2008, she discovered a lump in her breast. She had a family history of breast cancer, and a biopsy confirmed her worst fears. As a patient of Washington's Community Cancer Program, she had a bilateral mastectomy, chemotherapy, six weeks of radiation, and subsequent reconstruction. She is now cancer-free. Welcome, Cheryl, and thank you for sharing your experiences with us. Can you tell us a little bit about how you felt when you first found out that you had that lump and then what it was? Um, well, because of my family history, I was not surprised, but I immediately felt very anxious and overwhelmed with the news. And so then what did you do? You felt a lump, and so what happened next? Well, I um, saw my physician who sent me, um, I did have a mammogram, which came back negative, but because of the lump, they suggested I continue to have an MRI to confirm. And you bring up a good point, that sometimes mammograms can be negative when there is a cancer. That's right. And if there's a lump, it needs to be investigated further than just having a mammogram. That's right. And so you had an MRI done? I had an MRI done, um, and the result of that showed that I did indeed have breast cancer. So um, that's when the anxiety started. <laughs> yes. And then you had a needle-guided biopsy with the MRI. That, that's a relatively recent procedure to do, too. Mm -hmm. So you did benefit a little bit by some of the newer technologies. I huh? did. I did. And so then you got the diagnosis of cancer. Then what happened? Well, I, was, I wasn't sure um, on how I was going to get treated, who I was going to see um, as far as doctors um, were concerned. So I did a lot of asking around of um, neighbors or, or that have been through this process before to get some recommendations on where do I go to get treated. Mm -hmm. And um, they brought me to Washington Hospital. What did the doctors and nurses do at Washington Hospital to ease your discomfort about the diagnosis? Well, the, it first started with the first phone call. Um, when you make that first appointment to um, discuss what the treatment plan will be with the mm -hmm. doctor, um, you're very anxious. And I think the um, office, the girls in the office sensed that, and they were very reassuring um, to me and said, you know, don't worry, we're going to get you in and we're going to take good care of you. So that um, in itself um, was a relief for me, just making that first phone call. That might not have been the hardest thing to do with your treatment. What do you think was the hardest thing about the treatment? Um, well, actually, I think the first days of getting diagnosed and finding out what doctors I was going to um, be seeing and what the treatment plan was the most difficult. Um, but once I got into Washington and I met with the team of doctors, um, that sense of overwhelm overwhelmingness, you know, just kind of, you know, went away. That's wonderful. It's good to hear that. Did you have any special things to tell us about what other people should do in similar situations? Well, I, I think that gathering the information um, and to really tell your physician what it is that you kind of want from a treatment, because I felt like I had options with Washington Hospital. I felt that um, there just wasn't one treatment plan. They kind of took me as a person. I didn't feel like a medical record number. Mm -hmm. I felt they treated me as an individual patient. Now, your family history was significant in that you did have cancer in, and your mother, right? Yes, yes. And that was at a relatively young age, yeah, too, was, that she had yeah, it. Yeah, she was 47 years old. So I was... So I was, you were at the high... I'm sorry, you were at the high risk part anyway. That's right. Had you been getting annual mammograms or? I, I had been. And, um, you know, they, it, it just goes to show you how important it is for the women to do self-exams also because all the previous mammograms had been negative. 
So um, I found the LUP myself, and um, that's what got me the treatment. And then we go to the treatment then. How did you decide on a treatment plan? What was important? Not exactly, not the mechanics, but what was important to you as an individual in your treatment plan? I wanted to feel that I had some options. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be a discussion between um, the doctors and myself. So I wanted to feel good about what I was about to go through. I wanted to feel good about the plan so that I could get ready and roll up my sleeves and get to work. Because the hardest part of finding a, a doctor and a facility where you feel comfortable um, it was the hardest part. Well, I'm glad you found Washington and you felt comfortable. Can you tell me a little bit about your options? Because you could have just had just that the lump removed, right? Um, actually, um, not in my case. I, I, it was recommended that um, I had actually two lumps that they found mm. with the MRI. So they did um, suggest I have um, a mastectomy on one side. Mm -hmm. But I opted to have bilateral um, because of my family history, and um, I didn't want it to reoccur and then have to start all over again. So yeah. it was a personal choice, but they gave me that option, and they, they gave me um, the pros and cons and let me make that decision on my own. And I think that's an important part to bring up, that that was your individual decision to do it. And based on the data, you did have different options to choose from. Mm -hmm. And so you picked what fit you the best. How did you decide on reconstruction? Well, that was very important to me because um, I, I am still a young woman. And I wanted, to, if I had to go through the process, I wanted to come out on the other side and look as close to normal as I could. Um, and mm -hmm. so I wanted to wake up from surgery and, and not, it, it really helped with the devastation mm -hmm. um, of having the surgery, to be, have that option of having the reconstruction. So um, it was important to me. And what about your children and your husband? How, did, how, how has that happened? Any changes there? Um, my uh, family was very supportive. Mm -hmm. um, my husband uh, was also went to the appointments with me and when he met the doctors for the first time I think also felt a sense of relief mm -hmm. um, that I was getting taken care of. What about your children? How, how did it change with your children? Um, I think because I kept an upbeat um, attitude through the treatments it helped the children because they didn't think anything too unusual was going on. Um, I did, when I lost my hair, I did uh, continue to work and I got myself a wig and continued to get up in the morning and put on my lipstick and, and put on a brave front. And I think that helped with the kids because, you know, they saw that mom was still doing uh, daily activities just as normal as, as before. Do you have to do anything sp special now because you did have breast cancer? Any kind of surveillance that you have to do? Well, I continue to see my doctors on a regular basis, mm -hmm. um, and I try and stay healthy. Mm -hmm. I do take tamoxifen. Mm -hmm. um, I will be on that for five years, um, and and continue just with follow-ups with for, you know with the doctor. You, you've survived cancer, and cancer is such a scary thing. Do you worry at all that it's going to happen again, or has it changed how you look at life? It has changed how I look at life. The small things don't bother me. Oh, that's um, good to know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I like to live life, you know, day at a time, and um, really enjoy the things that I probably didn't notice before. <laughs> that's wonderful. What about, give us, Tell our audience what you think they should do if they have the diagnosis. How can, how can they be as positive as you were? Is there, do they reach out to the nursing staff? Do they reach out to their family? Do they go hide in a corner and wait till it's over? What, what, should, what should someone do when they think they have the diagnosis of cancer? Well, I think it's very individual for um, different patients, but I found it most helpful to keep my life as normal as possible, still see my friends and family, um, but other people I know like to, you know, I've heard of other f 
um, friends that have gone through this and you know might have wanted to kind of stay in and not be as social but um, I found for myself that it, it helped me to be social and continue life as usual. Well Cheryl is there anything else you think you could share with the rest of us? Well something that sticks out in my mind um, was how positive all the staff and the nurses were um, at all the different offices. When I went to my first appointment with the surgeon, um, one of the nurses came up to me with a bunch of um, different cards of appointments. And it was because I had to meet with the whole team. Mm -hmm. She made all the appointments for me and then came in while I waited in the office, in the doctor's office. She made all the appointments that you have to do for the next you know, two weeks to meet each part of the team members. And she came to me, she gave me each appointment, told me when it was, and then gave me a big hug and said everything was going to be fine and that they were going to take good care of me. I thought that was so helpful and she probably doesn't realize how helpful that was to me, but at the time I was so overwhelmed. The thought of going home to pick up the phone to make all these appointments was just overwhelming. So that was really... Um, I never got a chance to thank her, but that was really special. You can do it now. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Valerie. <laughs> and thank you, Cheryl, and for reminding us of the healing powers that come from treating patients with dignity and compassion. And thanks again to all of our guests today. It's clear from everything we've heard that Washington's Community Cancer Center is an impressive resource, even more than the latest in medical technology. It's a synergy of the doctors, nurses, and staff working together to provide top quality, compassionate care that makes it such a successful and award-winning program. The bottom line is that patients in our community don't need to travel far and wide for the latest cancer screening and treatments because comprehensive quality care is available right here at Washington Hospital. I'm Dr. Barbara Kostick, and thanks for watching. Voices in Health.